Dracula Dead and Loving It is today's review. And first and foremost, it's just a great title, Dracula Dead and Loving It. Um, I don't know why it's just such a great title, but it, it really is. Uh, kind of puts a smile on your face. The, the comedic implications are there. And I mean, obviously, you, you see like some of the million other titles of Dracula films. Dracula has risen from his grave. Dracula A.D. 1970 to or whatever um i don't know dracula dead and loving it what a great title um and just by its concept alone just like kind of on paper alone this you know is a dream uh this is a a mel brooks film and it's starring as dracula leslie nielsen so comedy legend director comedy legend actor uniting for a Dracula send-up. How, how great is that? Um, and definitely there's a lot of fun to be had in this movie. Definitely entertaining. Definitely funny. Um, but I do think it, it, it falls flat a little bit in, in a few respects. Where, I mean, maybe first and foremost, you'll, you'll just uh, immediately compare it to other Mel Brooks' work. Which, of course, he's done many send-ups of many different genres. He's done the Western with Blazing Saddles, the sci-fi spectacle with the Star Wars spoof Spaceballs, the swashbuckling Robin Hood with Robin Hood Men in Tights. And, and, you know, obviously, <laughs> obviously he's, he's visited the universal horror territory uh, with Young Frankenstein, which is possibly his best movie. Um, though, of course, I mean, Best Mel Brooks is, is definitely up for debate. I know some people will say, like, The Producers is, is, is the very best. Um, but Young Frankenstein is, is definitely a sentimental favorite of mine. Um, and you kind of want to see how he can go back to that territory just about 20 years later uh, with, with this film. This is a 1995 film, so it's, a, you know, recent by, by comparison, I guess. I think, you know, it is still... Uh, Mel Brooks's most recent directorial outing, which is kind of insane because that alone has been almost 30 years now. Now I think about, oh my God, this is, you know, this is a bona fide classic, I guess. <laughs> but um, uh, you'll, you'll compare it to his other movies for sure. Um, and definitely when you put this up against Young Frankenstein, you'll see, well, Young Frankenstein is very easily, very obviously, the superior film by leaps and bounds, just in about every respect. Um, but it doesn't mean these two can't coexist, right? So there's got to be other issues with it, and, and still the comparisons are there. Um, maybe what kind of strikes me is, is this not living up to the full comedic potential that it could. And I mean, of course, obviously, com comedy itself is subjective uh the most subjective of all genres i would say because i mean obviously if you look at a horror movie there, there are certain things that are like undeniably scary and even if say like a movie has like a jump scare or something like that it, it'll get that reaction but not every movie's gonna get a laugh out of you so that's that's a tricky thing to do and it's something that mel brooks does exceptionally uh, exceptionally well with, with with all of his films um but uh, what, what strikes me about this one is that unlike, say, something like Young Frankenstein, this is, is very much n not so much just like a, uh, a comedic riff on the genre itself or the type of movie itself. It's in, in, in so many ways, it is a remake of Dracula. Uh, of, I, I mean, it definitely takes from a lot of different Dracula films, like the Hammer films and and the Coppola film. There's there's elements of, of, of those to be sure, but mainly I would say this is the 1931 Bela Lugosi uh, Dracula and the comedic version of it. So so close that you could say it's, it's pretty much scene for scene, uh, the movie. So with that... Um, it, it doesn't become, how, how can we go about this this as a concept? It's more, how can we take each scene from, from this movie and how can we insert the, 
the comedy into it and, and play on, on those certain scenes. And you can almost kind of gauge the comedy scene per scene. There's, there's almost, you know, certain scenes are, are, are lending to comedy more than others that have room for comedy more than others. But then in certain ways, it's like they have to follow the plot. So they go beat per, for beat, scene per scene. They have to communicate the, the plot as it progresses just about in, you know, the exact same way as the 1931 film from, from beginning to end. Uh, so that does limit it a little bit where with Young Frankenstein, because it's, you know, it's, it's not a direct remake of Frankenstein, Bride of Frankenstein, absolutely 100% takes elements out of them, go, does certainly, uh, you know, uh, recapture certain scenes and, and does its own comedic takes on those. Uh, it's not as limited where it, it can kind of work as, you know, the sequel, it's, it's Frankenstein's uh, son or, or, you know, following his work and all that. Um, and, and that gives it more freedom, I think, where uh, there's more room for creating its own scenes that work for its own plot, and in turn it provides us, the audience, with more surprises, and it's just generally rife for, for more comedy, I think, and, and it can take those kind of unexpected turns where you know we have the whole... Uh, crazy kind of like Midsummer Night's Dream kind of aspects of the movie where the monster falls in love with, with Frankenstein's fiance and and uh, singing Putting on the Ritz and, and, and all that. So, I mean, that's a brilliant, brilliant film. This one is kind of limited where, you know, we have the exact same characters, exact same plot. You have to go through the certain things and you have to figure out how, how the comedy is and for anyone who's very familiar with uh dracula again particularly the 1931 film you're almost like pointing out certain things like, yes i know exactly this scene i know exactly this line oh this is a different line this is what they decided to put the comedy in and things like that like even if like you're super super into it you can kind of even rec recognize things like say the the beginning of, of the film where it's well in, in this case it's it's uh, renfield so they obviously take that you know version where it's where it's renfield beginning the film uh going to transylvania and, and making the deal with dracula and all that uh, there's that scene where he enters the castle and uh there's that huge spider web and you, you'll recall in, in the original film uh, Dracula walks through it, but off screen, so that so they kind of cut away, and it's kind of this mystical thing. But you know, if you know kind of the behind the scenes stuff, well, they they wanted to do a moment where he actually does. Uh, it is shown where he's walking through the the web, and and they actually do that in this movie. So that's kind of interesting. And you know, all this stuff. He cut Renfield cuts his finger and Dracula sees the blood, but hey, let's do the comedic version where oops, it's it's just a paper cut, but oh, it's it's spurting all over the place and Dracula's just looking like yo, you know, and stuff like that. And it's like, "Oh, I must have I must have hit a ligament there." Or something like that. It's I don't know. It's it's, it's silly. Um and, and that kind of stuff is funny, but again, it's kind of limited because because you just have to gauge it scene per scene per scene. Uh, what's what's more uh, opportune for inserting these comedic elements and and what has to kind of adhere to to the plot? I guess you know what I mean. Um, but you know, in, in fairness, we have we have a great cast. Obviously, Leslie Nielsen. Uh, he's he's tailor made for a comedic version of, of Dracula. In, in this role, um, he's great, but at the same time, sticking to certain things with with the original film, uh, it's not maybe as you know funny as it could have been. Where he almost feels like a straight man in in this film, where a lot of it is him reacting to I don't know you know things going wrong with you know certain. Uh, spells he puts over people, you know, he's like, oh, Renfield, you idiot, and, you know, the the, the maid not uh, following his instructions correctly, and, you know, the the girl at, at the opera not following his instructions correctly, and he just kind of has to react to it, and 
I don't know, uh, in being so gifted with the deadpan comedy, uh, when you play a character that's serious but meant to be funny just through the personality playing him alone, maybe you do kind of run into problems. Um, so, so, so there's that. Not that he's not cast correctly. He is. I just don't think he's utilized as, you know, as, as good as he could have been. Um, and, you know, with, with, with other people in the cast, I mean, it's, it, I, on, on paper, it's all, it's all just perfect. I mean, Peter McNichol, he's Renfield, and I can't think of a better actor in, in a comedy version, which, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's so good at, like, uh, obviously that original Renfield actor, he's uh, kind of taking that, manic energy and the the crazy demented smile that he has and he's so good at it uh and has his own comedic flair and in a way it's it's, it's kind of perfect because it's it's just about the same character he's playing from uh ghostbusters 2 when you think about it i mean it's, it's basically the same uh so absolutely perfect there and, and steven weber's is very good playing harker uh he's you know doing the the british thing much better than say oh i don't know uh, keanu reeves maybe so he, he he does that well uh we got amy yazbeck uh, his his betrothed uh, playing mina who's you know absolutely booberific in the movie and obviously she has her her comedic uh, chops and is no stranger to uh the mel brooks film having previously done uh, robin hood men in tights playing maid marion um Lisette Anthony as well, Harvey Corman, Dr. Seward, and just, I mean, again, if we're talking perfect, perfect casting, Professor Van Helsing, none other than Mel Brooks playing, you know, Dracula's nemesis in the film. It's, it's great. It's, it's perfect. And he, he's so, so funny. Um, but then you kind of think a little bit, you kind of think, Probably with the exception of Mel Brooks in that role, you could look about at about just about everyone in 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 the you know key roles in this film. They could just about be you know one degree off from being able to play this completely straight, being able to have this presented as a legitimate remake, and being pretty good, being not too bad at all. Um, but needless to say, it's, it, it takes the more comedic turn, um, but it's just not, I don't know, off the rails as it could have been in, in the same way that, again, young Frankenstein, if I can bring that comparison up a million times, but of course there's funny stuff and yeah, you know, Leslie Nielsen, uh, he, he's not completely uh, far off from dramatic roles a, a lot earlier on. I mean, of course, pre-airplane, he was you know, known for more dramatic roles. So, I mean, he absolutely could have played a straight Jack Dracula and, and done a great job, and and he almost does here. So maybe he, that maybe he secretly wanted to play a straight Dracula, um, but they insert the goofy stuff here and there. Uh, you know, some slapstick stuff and falling down the stairs and, you know, the effects with him, his shadow doing wacky things. And, and maybe another issue is that there, there is somewhat of a reliance on certain effects meant to, you know, service the comedy, uh, more than, you know, it, its own dialogue and its own kind of skewing of, of, of the familiar scenes wacky stuff with the shadow you know we have the the hair piece which is very funny haha <laughs> we you know his, his hair is just a hat um the very very strange looking mid-90s cgi bat with leslie nielsen's head superimposed onto it all that kind of stuff and lots of fake blood i mean maybe the best scene is is actually when when harker and uh, and Van Helsing are uh, you know visiting uh, Lucy's grave or her coffin I should say and, and having to to stab her with the stake and just you know gallons and gallons of blood 
come out. It's like, oh, she's dead enough. You know, things like that. It's, you know, it, it, it has its moments, the movie. it's It does. I can't say, you know, I can't say it's a bad movie. It's just, yeah, if, if you can make those comparisons to other Mel Brooks work and, and certainly other, uh, other work from Leslie Nielsen, you can point out a, a, a large amount of, of other works that have worked much better uh, than, than this. But at the same time, if you're, if you're intimate enough with, with the Dracula story, and, I mean, most people are, it's this enduring tale that we've seen so many different versions of, uh, so many different takes on it, uh, so many different visions. This is the comedic vision, this is the, the comedic take, and you know maybe there there was a desire to keep to the original text as possible and 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 add the comedy where Mel Brooks saw fit, which there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that um, I don't know. I think it could be funnier, but still a funny movie, still worth watching, uh, but I'd say with a warning, it's like, you know, lower tier Mel Brooks, let's, let's put it that way, um, but unfortunately, it's, it's, it's uh, his last film to date, uh, but he's still kicking, so uh, maybe, it's, uh, maybe it's time to uh, do a comedic take on The Wolf, man, how about that, Mel, what do you think, call me. But uh, that's my review. Dracula, dead and loving it. I'm alive and I'm liking it just fine. Uh, so take that for, for what it's worth. So thank you very much for watching. We're doing 31 Days of Horror. Horror movie reviews all throughout October on the channel. Make sure to comment, rate, subscribe, all that good stuff. Stay tuned for more. Until next time, I'll see you later and stay scared.